once the diagnosis is made, if ATTR is the is the amyloid protein, um, then the f the first thing we have to do is okay, is this genetic? Is it familial, or this is what we refer to as wild type, meaning it's random. Um, so there is a genetic test we do to see if the ATTR protein is associated with a genetic mutation. And if it is uh, if it is positive, the genetic test is positive then we have to go through uh, counseling the patient, counseling the family, testing the family to see if other members of the family carry that genetic mutation, which then uh, will heighten our awareness uh, uh, and, and will, will flag those patients to be carefully followed. So if they were to manifest symptoms and signs of the disease, we can jump on them and treat them uh, uh, preemptively and, and make sure that they, they, they benefit from it. Once the diagnosis is established, then the treatment essentially consists of the following strategies. One is you want to make sure that the amyloid protein is stabilized. So we call it TTR stabilization. So the reason, the reason this is important is amyloid protein, if it is stable, it is harmless to the body. Only when it becomes unstable, misfolded is when it causes devastation and damage to the organ where it is deposited. So stabilizing the amyloid protein can prevent further damage to the organs. However, that doesn't take away what has already been deposited before. So, so it does prevent decline and deterioration, but doesn't necessarily take away what has already happened. Um, so there are uh, uh, several drugs that are available now uh, to treat. These are TTR stabilizers, and we have shown that these drugs can improve symptoms, they can improve the quality of life, and they can also improve uh, survival in patients who have TTR amyloidosis. The second class of drugs are what we call TTR silencers. So we know that TTR protein is produced in the liver, so we turn off the switch, so it's no longer produced. So that is the silencer. And TTR silencer drugs are available. Two of them are actually approved for TTR involvement of the nervous system. We are currently undergoing clinical trials to see if these drugs are beneficial to people who have involvement of the heart. And then the third category of drugs are still investigational. And these category of drugs look to see if we can remove the protein that's already been deposited in an organ. Can you get rid of it? Can you, can you uh, isolate it and, and uh, somehow extract it? Uh, and this way it's removed from your body. Uh, that is still very investigational. We hope to have some more drugs in the future uh, as, 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 the trial, as, as the results of these trials become available. Now for the other type of amyloidosis, amyloid light chain amyloidosis, um, the light chain is produced in the bone marrow and uh, the, the cells that produce this light chain are called plasma cells. So this is a plasma cell disorder and there is, there is uh, another plasma cell disorder that's well known if uh, well known among hematologists, which is called multiple myeloma. So the drugs for this particular disorder are generally chemotherapy drugs and, and, and also bone marrow transplantation uh, uh, is, is, is known to be effective for AL amyloidosis. Breaking it down by the type of amyloidosis, the outcome is different. So if you have AL amyloidosis that is either missed or not diagnosed or not treated, the life expectancy is six months. It's devastating. It's like cancer. Um, it's a very, very high, high, high mortality rate. Uh, ATTR amyloidosis, if diagnosed and untreated, the life expectancy is three to five years. And so, and now, if you if you look at it from how about with treatment, what sort of improvement can you expect? So, AL amyloidosis with treatment life expectancy exceeds five years. And ATTR amyloidosis with treatment, life expectancy can be as long as 10 years or more. So diagnosis, appropriate diagnosis, nailing down the precise amyloid protein, which is affecting uh, the condition and, 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 and recommending the right treatment based on that finding is critical to uh, getting the best outcomes in this condition. At the Allegheny Health Network, we have a cardiac amyloidosis program. We also have all the diagnostic tools that are needed for the diagnosis of this condition. So this is a condition where you really need a team. 
because there are so many aspects to the diagnosis of amyloidosis, not to mention the treatment and the follow-up that is needed uh, based on the diagnosis. This is a, a, a condition that is, uh, requires everyone's uh, contribution to really get the best outcome. So uh, we have a wonderful cardiac amyloid team here, uh, which has allowed us to be highly successful in uh, managing these patients and making sure that they are all uh, benefiting the most with the available therapies. And finally, we are also on the cutting edge of research. We, we continue to, to evaluate investigational drugs um, and other, other investigational diagnostic uh, techniques uh, to improve our ability to uh, make early diagnosis and, and also get uh, more effective treatments so we can continue to improve the lives and outcomes of people who suffer from this condition.